Next Resources. And I am pleased to welcome you to today's Job Seeker webinar, Harnessing the Power of LinkedIn in Your Job Search. So today we're gonna to be talking about how you can use LinkedIn to increase your chances of job search success. And I just wanna introduce myself for those of you who have not done a webinar with me in the past. Again, I'm Lana Johnson. I have actually been in the staffing industry for 21 years. Um, next month is my 21 year anniversary and I've spent all those years with advanced resources. I'm currently our director of marketing, but I've held a lot of different positions within the company, including being president and being a salesperson. And I share that to give you confidence that I'm qualified to be your speaker today because I have definitely interviewed hundreds of candidates during my career and I have helped hundreds of clients in their quest to hire talent. And so I am very passionate about the, the world of seeking a job and of hiring talent. And I'm also very passionate about marketing and passionate about social media, including LinkedIn. So I'm very excited about this session. I definitely invite any or all of you to connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, I'm an open networker on LinkedIn, and so I'm happy to make that connection with you. And a few notes about our webinar today. We are recording this session, and we are also going to be, after the session, within about 24 hours, sending you an email that contains a link to the recording as well as a link to the slides from the session. So you will have all of the information that I'm presenting today, and we will also be posting it on our website. And so we have a page on advancedresources.com that has actually all of our previous webinars. So if this is your first time with us and you like what you see and you hear, we have about 13 other webinars that we have conducted and you can find all the information right on our website. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Um, first, let me share a little bit about Advanced Resources if you're not already familiar with who we are. We are part of the Advanced Group. So there are actually four companies under the umbrella of the Advanced Group. And we all do staffing of one sort or another. So advanced resources, as you can see in our core specialties, we specialize in HR, technology, healthcare, accounting, and office support staffing. And then Wonderland, our sister company, specializes in marketing and creative. And then advanced clinical specializes in the placement of um, professionals in the clinical research field and life sciences field. So just like to share with you the, the whole breadth of our organization in case you know of anyone who could use assistance in those areas. We have five locations. Um, four of them are here in Illinois. And then last summer we expanded to New York. And then this summer we're also expanding to Dallas. And so we are definitely growing. It's a very exciting time for advanced. We've been in business almost 30 years. Our focus is really insight results and excellence. And so um, we are a best of staffing diamond award winner, one of only four companies four companies in the United States with one best of staffing for eight straight years. And that's based upon feedback from both our clients as well as our candidates and the people that we place. So we're very proud of that. But enough about us, let's get down to business and talk about LinkedIn. And so what we're gonna do today, first of all, really briefly, is just talk about some LinkedIn basics. In case you're new to LinkedIn, I think on this webinar today, we probably have people who have varying levels of experience with LinkedIn. So it's gonna to try to provide some value for everybody, no matter what your experience level is. And then we're gonna get right into the fundamentals of using LinkedIn in your job search. And I really feel there are three key ways that you use LinkedIn. The first benefit of LinkedIn is getting noticed. And so being able to convey who you are and your personal brand online for the job, um, for the hiring world as a job seeker. The second way is to get connected. So LinkedIn obviously allows you to make connections with people that you already know, as well as people that um, you don't know who could help you in your job search. And then finally, getting opportunities. And so LinkedIn is just, it's not just about your profile. It's not just about making connections. Um, there are millions of jobs that are posted on LinkedIn and LinkedIn also gives you the opportunity to do tremendous research on people that you're interviewing with or companies that you're interviewing with. And so um, all of those things help develop opportunities for you to land your dream job. I also want to say, I forgot to mention this in the housekeeping details, 
section that if you have a question as I'm speaking, I'm going to focus on getting through the material, but at the end of the session, I will go to the questions area on GoToWebinar. So if something pops into your mind that you'd like me to answer, just go ahead and type it in the questions and I'll, I'll get to it at the end. Additionally, um, LinkedIn is constantly changing. And so you know, this session is going to be very updated. Uh, link, LinkedIn just went through a massive upgrade or updating um, earlier this year. And so many of the features on LinkedIn changed. And so I'm going to hope, hopefully touch on most of those. But if you have found something on LinkedIn that you think might be beneficial for the rest of the people on the webinar with us today, feel free to share that in the questions area as well, and we can talk about it. So let's talk about LinkedIn. Obviously, it's the world's largest professional online network. There are 467 million LinkedIn users, and um, that statistic is as of February of 2017. 40% of people who use LinkedIn use it every single day. So I thought that that was a, a very interesting number, a very high number um, in terms of people who are on LinkedIn every single day. There's 3 billion active jobs on average posted on LinkedIn every single day. So that's when we talk about finding those job opportunities, you can see there are millions of jobs that are posted on LinkedIn that you might not find if you were using CareerBuilder or using Indeed or any of the other job boards that are out there. LinkedIn is now owned by Microsoft. And so Microsoft purchased LinkedIn last year. So I think it's interesting that Microsoft made the investment in LinkedIn. It'll be very interesting to see where LinkedIn goes in the future as a result. LinkedIn is in over 200 countries throughout the world. So it's definitely a global platform. And there are 2.6 million company profiles. So I mentioned using LinkedIn to do research on companies a very rich source of information about organizations. Um, companies can create a company page. They can um, purchase additional services to really brand their business and tell you, the job seeker, even more about their organizations. And so it's, it's definitely a resource for companies who are looking to hire. And then this was interesting. I just read this the other day. So LinkedIn user or usage by, um, by demographics, right, by different age categories, the fastest growing group is people who are just coming out of college, new graduates. And so, you know, I, I often read that, that the younger generations are all into the Snapchat and Instagram and what have you, but, um, but LinkedIn is growing the fastest among new graduates. And so I thought that that was interesting. LinkedIn is used extensively by companies who are looking to hire talent. And so 92% of recruiters are using social networks to find talent. And when, when I say recruiters, I don't just mean like staffing agency recruiters or headhunters. I'm also including you know, recruiters who work within an organization on an internal HR team, so corporate recruiters. 92% of recruiters use social media to find talent. 90% of those recruiters are using LinkedIn. So these numbers, are very high and I think that they definitely make the case that if you are a job seeker and you are not using social media in your job search and if you are not using LinkedIn in your job search, you are definitely messing out, missing out on opportunities to, um, to make connections and to land that dream job. And so those statistics I think are important. With LinkedIn, you have different levels of membership or different types of accounts that you can buy. So there is a free subscription, right? So free LinkedIn accounts. Um, and then there are premium accounts. And I have had people ask, you know, gosh, if I'm in a job search, do you think it's necessary that I buy the premium subscription? You know, it's $50 a month. Um, and, you know, the answer to that is I would try using the free version first. And if you're not finding the success that you were hoping to see, then it might be worthwhile to invest in a monthly subscription. And you can subscribe by month. Um, you can subscribe annually and you get some discount. But, you know, you can definitely subscribe by month. And there are some kind of cool features that come with a premium account. And I'll show you a couple of examples of those as we go on. There is another level of accounts and that's called the executive level. And the main difference with the executive level is it just gives you more in-mails. And in-mail is a LinkedIn feature, proprietary term. It's basically the messaging system within LinkedIn. And so, you know, some connections, um, I'm an open networker. Some people are not. They only want to connect with people that they know and they don't want everyone to know what their email address is. 
And so InMail gives LinkedIn members the ability to contact each other and message each other without divulging your personal email address. Um, so that's what InMails are. And uh, uh, you know, the account, the type of account that you have, free, premium, or executive, uh, one differentiating feature is how many times you can send in mails. And so when you're at an executive level, you have more in mails that you can send each month. And so that's the difference between accounts. So now that we've kind of gone over some fundamentals about LinkedIn, let's talk about how you use LinkedIn in your job search to get noticed, get connected, or get opportunities. So let's start first with getting noticed. So getting noticed, you know, it's all about your personal brand and it's all about the, the personal brand that you portray online. And one question I often ask people is, have you ever Googled yourself? Have you ever just gone to Google, typed into the search bar, Lana Johnson, Chicago, Illinois, to see what comes up? And I think it's interesting when you do that. And for people who are on LinkedIn, your LinkedIn profile will be one of the first things that comes up in a Google search. But generally speaking, you know, if you haven't Googled yourself, you should be aware that employers are using social media very much so to check out candidates. And so 65% of employers Google job candidates as part of the evaluation process. So in the last three months, my own marketing team here at Advanced Resources, I've hired or we've added three people to the team. And you'd better believe that I Googled every one of them as part of the you know, assessment process, checking them out online, seeing how active they were, checking out the quality of their profiles. And so it's important that you have a strong online presence, especially on LinkedIn, but really on all social media outlets. 36% of employers have declined to interview a candidate because of something that they found out or something that they saw about that candidate on social media. So this number is really growing with 36% of recruiters turned a candidate away because of something that they saw online. I think that that's a really important statistic for everyone to know. So it could be that maybe you had typos in your profile, or maybe your profile wasn't very complete, or maybe you didn't really have that many connections. You just didn't look like you were really thriving on LinkedIn. So that might be a reason that a, a hiring manager would turn some, someone away. And then of course, if they looked at your Facebook profile or if they saw you on Instagram or wherever else, and you know, there was foul language or obscenities or just, you know, you, you all know, right? The image that you portray online is very important when you are a job seeker because you have to assume that a recruiter or a hiring manager is looking at you online. And so, um, so it is important that you're getting noticed and that you're getting noticed the right way and for the right reasons as a job seeker. So positive online reputation starts with your LinkedIn profile. It's very important that you invest time to make your profile as strong as it can possibly be. So it's really that foundation on which you're gonna grow your network and on which you're gonna be noticed online. Um, it's the first impression that you're probably making on a prospect or a hiring manager or maybe someone that you're just networking with. And so you want that, that first impression to absolutely be your best foot forward. There are 45 million profile views on LinkedIn every day. So I think we've established now, you know, well enough that LinkedIn is a, a vital part of your search. So you want to put in the time to make your profile awesome. So what we're going to do now is give you some steps. To make your profile awesome. And again, these steps have been really updated um, to reflect you know, all the current updates on LinkedIn. So the first thing that you want to do that I always tell job seekers to do is, is to turn off um, or to check your settings. And the reason that you want to do this is if you haven't changed your settings, sometimes when you're making changes to your LinkedIn profile, LinkedIn will tell your network. And so you know, you want to turn it off because first of all, telling your whole network that you've added a new profile picture or telling your whole network that you've updated your education. First of all, it could be kind of annoying and maybe a little bit embarrassing. It's probably not something that you need your whole network to know. Secondly, if you are currently employed and if there are members of your network that work with you or perhaps are above you, um, they might become suspicious if they see that all of a sudden you're making all these changes to your LinkedIn profile. So it's really easy to do. You just click on, you know, if you're on your profile, just click on your face in the in the top 
navigation toolbar, click on settings and privacy. And then if you just go to the privacy section, so there are three areas in your settings, account, privacy, and communications. Go to privacy, go to sharing profile edits, edit, and then say no. So change it to no. If it's currently yes, then change it to no. And now any changes that you make to your profile will not be broadcast to your whole network and they will remain private. So your profile, you wanna put your best foot forward, you wanna look great. First of all, that starts with just the visual image that you are presenting. So you have a profile picture and you have the capability to add a profile picture and you absolutely should add one. So I think it's a, it's a, it's a detractor to the quality of your profile if you do not have a picture and you just have the little square circle um, filled in with gray. So you want to have a picture and you want to make sure that your picture is the best representation of yourself. And so no kids, no spouses, no pets. Try and make sure it's not fuzzy. Make sure it's nice, clear. Your face or your head should take up 80% of the space that your profile picture can go in. And you, you know, your background, um, the background picture is everything that you see behind your face. And so LinkedIn gives you the chance to add a background picture. And you could add something that you think represents um, you and your personality or maybe your job that you do. For me, I've got the light bulbs and one's kind of an idea because I work in marketing and I think that's kind of a fun way to convey ideas and creativity. Or you could just do something that is your city or you could do something that is just a, an abstract graphic something. But it, LinkedIn gives you the chance to change that background image and again it just adds some personality to your profile and then you've got your headline so you'll have your your picture obviously your name and then you've got a headline and your headline you have 120 characters that you can use to convey to the world who you are and what you're about in in a headline fashion and a lot of people just put kind of their job title lana johnson director of marketing or sometimes people just kind of put where they're located and when you're a job seeker, that's a mistake because these 120 characters are valuable real estate to tell the world what you're about. And also it makes you searchable. And so you wanna try and include some keywords actually throughout your profile. Remember the concept of keywords because if a recruiter goes to Google and they search for marketing director Chicago, because that's the position that they're trying to fill, you want your name to show up in those search results. And so anyway, that is your headline. We have 120 characters. And I like to think of this as what is your personal branding statement? Sometimes people put unemployed or looking for an opportunity. And you don't want to do that. You don't need to broadcast to the world right in your headline that you're currently unemployed. Use this space to sell yourself and to make that positive first impression. As you scroll down your profile, you will see that there are different sections. And one of the very first sections is, um, is the activity and article section. And so this section used to be a little bit more hidden. In the older version of LinkedIn, you needed to click on something to see a, a, a person's activity. Activity includes things on LinkedIn that you have liked, or status updates that you have shared or things that you have made a comment on. And then articles, articles are, um, they, it used to be called LinkedIn Pulse and now it's just called articles, but you have the ability to write kind of your own blog post on LinkedIn. And this is something that I highly recommend if you're trying to build your personal brand is to share some thoughts or share some insights in the form of kind of a blog post, like anywhere from 300 to 2,000 words, you can add some images. So you don't need to be a professional writer. Obviously, if you do write an article, you would want it to be free of any errors and you know you would want it to read well. But I think that this is a tremendous way to portray some of your thought leadership, some insight that you have, some viewpoints that you have as a job seeker. So that people will get the sense. And I think this is a great idea, especially if like you're a fresh graduate and you don't have a lot of job experience. You know, maybe you go to an, an industry conference and you come back and you could write an article about something that you learned at the conference and what you thought of it and how you're thinking about it. So this is, you know, this is just an, an opportunity for you to share your thoughts and establish yourself as a thought leader and really strengthen your personal brand. If you don't have any articles, 
all that you would see here are just your activity, the things that you have liked, the things that you have commented on, the things that you have posted. And I think that that's very important as well. So if a recruiter is looking at your profile and they see that you're active, they see that you're sharing updates or that you're, you know, liking and commenting other things, I think that that portrays a positive image. And so that is the articles and activities section on LinkedIn. And then you will scroll down, scroll down to your current and your past experience. And LinkedIn made some pretty dramatic changes to how this section looks um, in the current version of your profile. And so one of the changes is your current experience is the only one that will show all of this information, right? So these are my two past experiences, and you can see that it's really just my title, where I worked, and what the dates were. And then I have, if I want to see more, I have to click on see description. But for your current job or for the last job that you held, it will show everything. And so that's just one change. So be aware of that. You should still, in your past experiences, you should still put this information. You know, again, it gives you the chance to convey accomplishments that you've had using those keywords. So still use those sections, but they just don't show up without clicking on see description. You also have the opportunity to add the media. And so we're going to talk about that in a second. But this, I think, is really beneficial. Like for me, being in marketing, you know, on my LinkedIn profile, I have, I'm showcasing the webinars that I've spoken on, I'm helping to promote our company, come learn what it's like to work in advance, and then just some, you know, production work that we've done in terms of videos and what have you. But you have the chance to add that media. The other thing that many people don't do, but I think it can be very helpful when you are in a job search is, don't just put your title. You have you have more valuable real estate here where you can put some keywords and again some personal branding statements about the things that you did and the jobs that you held. And so you can see for myself, I have my title, but then digital marketer impacting business growth. You know, when I was president of the business, staffing industry leader, workforce solutions innovator, um, sales driven leader, passion for culture. So you can use more than just your title, again, to convey more things about yourself um, and hopefully, again, help build that, you know, that knowledge of who you are and what you're about. Like I said, you, you do have the chance to add media. And so why would you add media? What if you're not marketing? What if you're an accountant? What kind of media could you add? Well, if you've written an article, you could put it here. If you've done a presentation at work that you were proud of, you can put a presentation here. If there's a video that you were in, perhaps, um, you could put that video here. Maybe you were interviewed, you know, for a, for, for a news broadcast or whatever it might be. You can include that here. And again, it just makes your profile that much more interesting and compelling. And again, it allows you to showcase some of the things that you've done in your past. And so take advantage of the media feature. If you keep scrolling down, you'll, you'll see sections for education, volunteer experience, and projects. And so again, these sections, um, LinkedIn definitely made like the volunteer section a little bit more prominent and they changed how the projects area works. And so I'll touch on that briefly. First, let me talk about education. You should always, of course, have your education on your LinkedIn profile. It's up to you to determine whether or not you want to put the dates of your education on your profile. You don't have to, um, but you certainly can. And if you didn't finish college, um, should you put the college, you know, should you put that college experience on your LinkedIn profile? Absolutely, you should, because it shows that you, you know, you did attend college. And not only that, a lot of people network on LinkedIn um, with other alumni. So by listing the college that you did attend, even if you didn't graduate, it might open up some networking opportunities to you with other alumni. Volunteer experience, I think, is very important to include on LinkedIn. I think it's important for potential employers to know if you have volunteer experience, it shows that you're active, it shows that you care about making a difference. Um, and these things, you know, these types of characteristics, of course, translate over to the kind of employee that you might be if you were to work for an organization. Featured skills. So LinkedIn gives you the chance to list skills that you have in your personal toolkit. And so, for instance, I can list social media, or I could list sales experience, or I could list 
um, any of the skills I think I have, and you'd select those from LinkedIn, and that makes you searchable. And so if a recruiter is going into LinkedIn and they're searching for people with a certain set of skills, then that makes um, that gives you the potential of being found by that recruiter. You can list up to 50 skills, and, but it only shows, I think it only shows the top three, maybe five skills on your profile without clicking see more skills. So prioritize the skills that you are listing and make your most relevant ones the first ones that you list. And then there is an area called accomplishments or projects. And so they just really changed this area. This is where you can list any certifications that you have, any you know, speaking engagements that you have had, any associations that you've been a member of or associations that you've been a leader in. Um, you can also list other languages that you speak besides English. And it, it encapsulates it all in one area called accomplishments. And in the older version of LinkedIn, these areas were all separated out. So it's just more neatly packaged. I really like the way that they've done this. And then there's the interest area at the very bottom of your profile. And the interest area will list the groups that you belong to on LinkedIn. And we're gonna talk in a minute about groups. And it might also list influencers that you are following. So again, if this area um, shows some pretty relevant groups, you know, for me, marketing related groups or, or, or um, HR related groups, um, influencers in my space, if this area looks very rich and compelling. Again, it just portrays the type of person that you are, especially within your field. So take advantage of all these areas. You can also get recommendations from people. And if you are a job seeker, I highly recommend that you make the effort to get at least five to seven recommendations. And recommendations are really just that. They're just kind of testimonials from other people that you know. It could be coworkers. In your company, it could be colleagues that you've had in the past, it could be customers that you've had, and, or it could just be people who know you exceptionally well. But the recommendation section just allows you, again, to enrich your profile. And if you're not sure how to go about asking for recommendations, LinkedIn actually has a feature built right in that makes it very easy for you to request recommendations from people that you know who are already on LinkedIn. And so I included a couple of resources here um, to give you instructions on exactly how to do that. So a lot of information to take in about how to build out your profile. Um, but you do want to make sure that your profile is as complete as possible. LinkedIn actually has a status called all-star profile. And so when you achieve your all-star profile status, you know that you've, you've made your profile just about as complete as it can be. What if you need some help? What if you're just getting started or what if you're not quite certain the direction that you want to take your profile in? Well, there are very easy ways to try and find some inspiration. First of all, try and search profiles of role, role models, right? Maybe um, people that you really admire within your industry or maybe even your own company. Take a look at their profiles and see how they're positioning themselves. I'm certainly not suggesting that you should copy what they say. But I think that um, it's good to find some inspiration, see, you know, you always kind of find some cool things that other people are doing on LinkedIn to make themselves stand out. You can search for people by job title or by company. So perhaps there's a, you know, perhaps you're making a career change from one field to another. Maybe you're going from, you know, from retail to education or from, for, from education to the, the corporate world. Um, and you're not quite sure how to position yourself, you know, go and search for people who have the job title that you aspire to obtain. And you can see how they're positioning themselves, what kind of keywords they're using to really convey their accomplishments. And you can find some inspiration in that way. So you can get ideas for strong profile headlines, summary statement wording, um, employers that you might want to research, LinkedIn groups that you can join, and you actually might find ways to make connections and to build out your network just by doing some research on other people to help you kind of figure out how you want to frame yourself up. Okay, then the last part about getting noticed is developing your profile is one thing. And so once you have a great profile built up, now, you know, as a job seeker, take advantage of the opportunity to market yourself on LinkedIn. And by that, I mean, off of LinkedIn, make sure that you are promoting your LinkedIn URL or your LinkedIn, you know, website address, or not website address, but your address on LinkedIn, your profile address. So 
absolutely you should include your LinkedIn URL on your resume. And it should be right up there, right under your name, um, so that people can click on it and head right over to your LinkedIn profile. Because obviously now you've seen with the ability to add media and to add more context as to who you are, LinkedIn can give a, a, a recruiter a better picture of who you are than just your resume might. So definitely try and direct people from your resume to your LinkedIn profile. One thing I always recommend is to create a custom LinkedIn URL. And so what do I mean by that? If you haven't changed your URL on LinkedIn, it's gonna say something like HTTP colon backslash backslash um, LinkedIn.com and then just a bunch of characters, right? Just a bunch of random characters. But you have the ability to go in and make that URL for your profile your name. And so, you know, for me, I'm, I'm LinkedIn.com backslash Lana.Johnson instead of a bunch of random, you know, names or letters and characters. So definitely do that. If you have business cards, um, personal business cards, which, you know, if you're unemployed, I recommend taking advantage of the opportunity to have some professional business cards created. There's so many resources online that you can use to do this very inexpensively, but I just think it's nice to have a business card if you're at a networking event or if you meet someone, you know, at your son's baseball game, you can give them something that helps them remember who you are. And if you do that, include your LinkedIn URL on your business card. In your email signature, include your LinkedIn URL. Again, maybe you're sending a cover letter via email to a, a headhunter or to a recruiter or a hiring manager. And again, include your LinkedIn URL in your signature because again, that gives the, the person, the recipient of your email, the chance to click on that and to learn more about who you are and what you're about. If you have social media profiles on other platforms like Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, put your LinkedIn URL on those sites as well. Again, it could just direct people back to you on LinkedIn. Um, so again, if you're a job seeker, it could help you get more exposure. So that's getting noticed, and that is you know, building out that profile, building out that online image. Now, what do you do with it? Well, it's important on LinkedIn that you start to make connections as a job seeker. And you know, LinkedIn, I feel when it first really kind of came out, people were definitely more, um, more apt to only connect with people that they knew. But now I feel like there are, are a lot more open networkers and people who are willing to make that connection to build out their networks. And so that is the tremendous power of LinkedIn. And you know, sometimes job seekers can be hesitant about networking. Perhaps that, you know, you maybe you're a little bit more introverted or you're not quite as comfortable with connecting with people that you you don't know. That's okay. And I know a lot of people who are like that, but I feel like you have to just understand that 70% of people find jobs through networking. So for all the jobs that are posted on CareerBuilder and Indeed and on company websites and advertised in so many different ways these days online, the fact remains that most people find their jobs through somebody that they know. And so if you are, again, maybe you're getting freshly out of school or maybe you're getting into a new field or maybe you're making a complete career change, whatever it might be, you are missing out if you don't have some networking skills. And if you are more introverted, the thing is with LinkedIn, it's all online. And so I feel like that is a lot less um, scary, if you will, than like having to go to an in-person networking event and really put yourself out there to meet other people. And LinkedIn makes it so easy for you to build up your connections. And so um, there are different types of connections on LinkedIn. There's first degree, second degree, third degree, um, and those are just, indicate the level of relationship that you have with each person that you're connected with. It also, it, it also will tell you how much information you might be able to see about that person. If they're first degree, you can see everything. You know them, you're directly connected with them. If you're third degree, you don't really know them. Um, if you're second degree, you know them through somebody else, somebody that you know is connected to that person. And you can see some information, but again, you also might have limitations on how you can get in contact with that person based upon the degree. I haven't touched yet on LinkedIn groups. LinkedIn groups is a massively important feature for job seekers. And um, there are millions of groups on LinkedIn. 
and the groups could be associations, they could be, you know, just people in certain industries or fields. And I'll show you some examples of this in a little bit. Groups just really allow you to connect with people who are in your space. And the other major benefit of groups is that you can see people and you can interact with people that you might not be directly connected with. And so if you are, if you are all the members of the same group, you have the ability to interact with each other and to have discussions with other, with each other without necessarily being a first degree connection. And so if you're a job seeker, you must go find the groups that are relevant to your field. If you're changing careers, you must go find groups that are relevant to the field that you're trying to break into because they are a phenomenal resource. Um, for making connections and building your network and also just for industry knowledge and what have you. So groups are very, very, very important. And then out of network. So you might not be connected, you might completely not be connected to someone at all. And those are out of network people. You still have the ability to view some of their information. Um, but unless you are a connection, you would be a little bit more limited on what you can see and how you can connect. So you wanna build your contacts. Obviously, you wanna to invite to connect with people that you know. So people that you, you know, currently work with or people that you've worked with in the past, people you went to school with, friends, family, you know, um, people in your community that you're friends with. You wanna try and connect with everybody on LinkedIn. And you might think, well, I'm just kind of friends with them. I don't know, I don't need to be connected with them on LinkedIn. Just remember that it's not necessarily about being connected with them but it is the ability to see and network and be with connected with everybody that they know in their network. And so go ahead, take the chance and invite people to connect because that can build out your network. You know, your network can become the size of millions and millions of people, depending upon how many people you yourself are connected with. You can send introductions. Um, through LinkedIn. So if you have a connection, your first degree connection with someone and you see that they know a person who wor maybe works for a company that you're really interested in getting into, you can ask your connection through LinkedIn to make an introduction for you. And so that's a great feature. And then in mails, like I've already touched on, you can contact people using in mails. Again, that's LinkedIn's proprietary messaging system, kind of like email within LinkedIn without you having to know a connections personal email address. So that is another way that you can ask for connections. Um, LinkedIn updated in this last update all of their search capabilities. So they used to, the search filters used to look very different. Um, and now I think they've really streamlined it and made it so much easier to search by such a wide variety of different filters. So you can, um, you know, at the top, of your LinkedIn profile, you see just a little magnifying glass and then a white bar. And you come to this area and you can type in, you know, this, a person's name or a company name, whatever it is that you wanna search for. And then you can search for people, jobs, posts, companies, groups, or schools. And so that, you know, very, very simple search functionality. And then you can filter down your search over on the right-hand side. So let's say, that you are, um, you know, you're new to Chicago and you are a social media marketing expert and you want to meet and network with other people who do what you do. This is how you can find who those people are. So you can try and find first degree connections, second or third, you can pick a location, you can pick certain companies that you'd like to search within. And there are other many, many other search criteria as well that really let you hone in and narrow down to try and find those connections that could help lead you to your next opportunity. So here's just an example. I can type in social media marketing in the greater Chicago area, and then I'm going to get a list of the people, obviously, who match that criteria. On LinkedIn, in the older version, you used to have to request to connect with someone and to and you used to have to make a couple of different steps. And so, for instance, you used to have to indicate, okay, I want to connect with Sue Smith. I need to tell LinkedIn how I know Sue Smith. Is she a colleague? Is she a, you know, is she a friend? Um, and you don't have to do that anymore. Basically, all that you have to do is just hit the connect button and you can customize the invitation. And so what that means is you have the ability, if you're trying to connect with someone, you can just you know, click on send now, and that person is just gonna get an email that says, Lana Johnson would like to connect with you. Or you have the ability to personalize um, and add a note to your connection request. And I always recommend that you do that because I think it makes it stand out. 
I think even if you don't know a person, you can say something like, oh, I read an article that you published on LinkedIn. I thought it was really interesting. I'm trying to build my network within the Chicagoland area. I just moved here. Would you like to connect? And sometimes the person will say no. Sometimes they'll decline your invitation. That's okay. But more often than you might um, suspect, they will say yes and they will connect with you. And so LinkedIn has, in the newer version, has made it easier to make connections with people. Maybe, um, maybe I did my search criteria, and one of the people that came up with my search criteria was Mike Temkin, and he's a secondary degree connection, which means I'm not currently connected to him. I don't know him, but I would like to be introduced to him. He's you know, got a position in a company I'm interested in, or, um, or I think he knows some people that I'd like to get connected to, or maybe I want to work for Mike but I don't know him. You, um, there used to be a function called get introduced. Um, and so that function again had a little, little bit more stringent criteria. Today in the newer version, all I have to do is click on mutual connections. And so this will show me all of the people that I know who know Mike. And I can pull that list up, which you can see here. Here are all the people that Mike knows that I also know. And what do you know? Rich Diaz knows Mike. I work with Rich at Advance. I didn't know he knew Mike, and now I can go contact Rich, I can send Rich a message and say, hey, I'm trying to get to know Mike, would you mind making an introduction for me? Um, and so again, it, it makes it very, very simple for you to get introduced to the people that you'd like to be connected to. So another way to get connected is to be active on LinkedIn. So again, we touched on articles, you know, you have the ability to write articles and post them on LinkedIn. More often than not, however, people share status updates. So they might have been to a conference that they thought was great and they want to share information about it. They might have read an article that they thought was great, so they want to share that with their networks. And by being active and sharing information with others, information that you think others would be interested in, it shows that you're active, it shows that you're participating in your space, and again, it just helps bring you to the forefront and, and helps you show up and have some visibility with other people who are in your network. I mentioned earlier that groups can be vital to your job search. And so here's a little bit about groups. Again, there are like 4 million groups on LinkedIn and you will find a group for just about everything that you can imagine. And so for me, again, you just go to that top bar, that top search bar on your LinkedIn profile. I can type in some keywords. I'm trying to find some groups that specialize in search engine marketing because I'm in marketing and I, I'm trying to break into that field and I want to see what's out there. Not only do I want to see what kind of connections I could make in these groups, but I also just want to read up on search engine marketing. I want to stay current with what's going on, with what people, I want to see what people are saying about search engine marketing. And so I can search for groups that are relevant. And so I will get a list of groups and these will be geographically sorted to my area, and then I can pick a certain group that I'm interested in. If I'm not already a member, it will say ask to join. Some groups are open and anyone can join them, and then some groups are closed, which just means you have to ask to join the group. Um, and there's, you know, usually, um, usually most group administrators are, are not, you know, they're not gonna turn everyone away. So. And then you can see, you know, if you pull up a group, you can see all of the people that are in that group. And again, I think groups are just so valuable because you can get access to people, participate in conversations with people that you might not be connected with. And that maybe you don't know people who know these individuals in search engine marketing, so you can't ask for introduction. But if they're in the same group as you, you have the opportunity to interact with them. So you can see how important that can be to your search. Let's say, for instance, I'm, come, I'm in the group Inbound Marketers, and I'm trying to find more ways to connect and interact with people who are in the field of inbound marketing. So I join this group, and groups will have discussions. So it's kind of like a stream of status updates, but it's just relevant to that group, to the interests of that group. And so that's what group discussions are. And perhaps I see Chelsea Hunterson is a person that, um, that I'm interested in connecting with. She works for HubSpot, and I that's on my target list of companies that I'd like to work at. And so she's in my group and she's posted something. You know, it's very, um, it's a very, there's a very soft way to introduce yourself to Chelsea and to comment on, you know, she just posted an article, what's your secret tactic for engaging your community? I can click on these three dots at the top of her post and I can click reply privately 
And then I can send her a private message. I can say very informative article. Can I send you a connection request, you know, so we can keep in touch on these kinds of topics. So there you see, I now have the ability to communicate with Chelsea. She's not a connection of mine at all. And she works for a company that I, is on my target list. Because I'm in the same group as her, I have the opportunity to interact with her and to perhaps connect with her. And that could, you know, put you one step closer to your dream job. So these are different ways that you can get connected. You've built an amazing profile. You've built your network of connections. You've joined groups. You're posting status updates. You're out there. Now, how do you find the opportunities? You know, again, this, you know, 3 million jobs on average every single day are posted on LinkedIn by companies, by recruiters. And so don't forget to go search for your dream job on LinkedIn. And there's, um, again, very, very simple. The new navigation makes it so simple to search for jobs. If you're on your, um, your homepage, so I'm not in my profile right now. I just typed in LinkedIn.com and this is what comes up. So all my status updates. On the top bar, just click on jobs, and it's going to take you to the job section of LinkedIn. They made vast improvements to the job functionality on LinkedIn. And so um, it's just really cool. So when you come to the job section, it is going to make recommendations on jobs that match your profile. And so again, this is why it's important that your profile is strong and complete because there are intuitive things that LinkedIn is now doing to help you. But if your profile is very sparse, um, you're gonna miss out, potentially miss out on opportunities. So LinkedIn will recommend jobs that you might be interested in. They will recommend jobs that match your background. Um, they'll recommend fat, you know, if I, if they'll, they'll recommend fast growing companies that I might like based upon what my profile says. And they, they will tell me all of the companies that are in my network. So if I have, you know, 2,200 different connections, Am I going to go through and see where each connection works? No, but LinkedIn will tell me where all of my connections work. And so if one of those companies is on my target list as a job seeker, I can go look at the people I know who are already in that company. And again, knowing that 70% of people get their jobs through networking, that gives me an, a path to take. I mentioned earlier that if you have a premium subscription, you can see some features in LinkedIn that you might not be able to see if you are just a free member. And this is an example of one of them. This is new and it's called LinkedIn salaries. So a common question that job seekers have is, gosh, I'm looking for a new job. How do I know exactly what I'm worth? I know what I made at my last job. I know what I'd like to make, but how do I know what my market value is? And there are a number of different online tools, salary.com, many others that can help you do that. But LinkedIn also can help you do that based upon all the data that is in LinkedIn. So it can tell you, you know, per, I can just click on um, LinkedIn salary once I'm in the job section and, um, and it will bring me to LinkedIn salary. You have to be a premium member. So I'm a premium member, but I can see maybe I'm an executive assistant and I want to know what the what the job market is like salary wise for executive assistants in the greater Chicagoland area. And so I can get that information. I can see what the median is. There's a number of different ways I can drill down on this information based upon my years of experience or what have you. And so I just think that that's a really cool feature, again, if you're a premium member. But getting back to finding jobs, maybe now I'm searching for marketing director in Chicago, Illinois. And so I just type in those keywords. Again, very simple. The, the search functionality used to be a little bit more complex when you were looking at jobs, but I just start with the basics, what I'm looking for and where I want to work, and it's going to pull up some jobs for me. Then I will see a number of different filter criteria over on the right-hand side. Maybe I only want to work 10 miles from home, so I can put that in. It'll further narrow down the job search. You can search obviously by location, by company, and there are a number of different other search criteria. You can really, really narrow down what you're looking for. Another thing that you can do is create a, a search alert. And so maybe I've really figured out the criteria of what I want. So every time I come back to LinkedIn, I don't want to have to put all this stuff in again. I can save my search and I can create an alert. And so not only have I saved the search, so I can just come back and look up my saved search to see what jobs might be new. But if I create alert an alert, LinkedIn will let me know when a new job gets entered that matches my criteria. So I think that that's a very positive feature. Then let's say there is a job that comes up in my search that I like, that I want to get interested in. So I click on the job 
and I can now view the job. And so this is similar to what we had with LinkedIn before, but again, if you're a premium member, you can see some new things. So I think that this is very cool, this section down here, competitive, competitive intelligence about other applicants. And so this section will tell me, based upon the information that is in my LinkedIn profile, how well I stack up to the other people who have applied for this job. So I just think that that's a really cool feature. You know, if it's a job I'm really interested in, and I'm a premium member, and I look at this, and my profile, it matches the job 95%. You know, that can give me a, a, a high degree of confidence and just be that boost that sometimes as job seekers, we really need. And so I read the job description. I check it out. Um, I can see jobs that are similar, but I say, well, Planet Interactive, I really want to work there. Um, I want to check out a little bit more and see who I know there. I can save this job and come back to it. Or I'm like, okay, this is it. I'm going to apply for this job. I click on easy apply, and it is so easy to apply for a job. And so this is what the application looks like, my email, my phone, and then my resume. And so all I need to do is just upload my resume in Word format or in a PDF. If I'm a premium member, again, another feature, move application to the top of the recruiter's list. And so if I want to make sure literally that, you know, if a recruiter gets 30 resumes that day, they'll get an email from LinkedIn that says, here are the people who have applied to this job. As a premium member, I can select to be sure that I'm listed at the top of that list, which is a pretty cool feature. Let's say I I think I like the opportunity at Planet Interactive, but I want to learn more about the company. Like I said, there are millions and millions of company pages. So this is an organization's chance to showcase information about their organization, what they do, you know, testimonials from their own employees. It gives the company, you know, you're a job seeker trying to build your personal brand, and, and LinkedIn company pages give a company a chance to build their employer brand, what it's really like to work for that organization. And so this is where you can do a lot of research. I mean, and in my other webinars, I always say, like, as a job seeker, your job is to do your research and to be prepared. And with LinkedIn, with other tools online, there's no excuse to not do that, to give yourself the edge over your competition. So this is an example of LinkedIn company pages. Um, you can, if you're a company, you can opt to have a careers page, which you just pay money for to LinkedIn, of course. And this gives you the chance to tell even more about your organization. You know, um, so we do that here at Advanced Resources, and I, I think it's very helpful. You can see all the employees who are in your network who work at, the, at this company. So I have 17 people in my network who work at Planet Interactive. So again, you know, for the ability to make those connections, um, ask, you know, ask people that you know, obviously, what's it like to work there? What do you like about it? What do you dislike about it? You know, is the company growing? How's it going? Again, gives you more intelligence, and again, that intelligence you can use as you're interviewing. Oh, here's an example. I mentioned in premium how you can see how you stack up. So this, you know, if I'm applying for a job, I can click on how do you stack up competitive intelligence, and it'll tell me you're in the top 50% of 187 applicants. So I think this is interesting. It'll tell you how many people have applied for this job, and again, how you stack up. And it'll tell you which skills you have, which ones that you don't. And so it'll tell you what your areas of weakness might be. Um, and so you can see there are, you know, just some really good, some really good morsels of wisdom that, again, give you the inside scoop on that job that, again, could either build up your confidence or could help you in the interviewing process. Like I said, you can find people that you know within a targeted company. So I said before, there's 17 people in my network who work at Planet Interactive. I can click and see who all 17 of those people are. Some of those people are second degree connections, so I might not know them as well. But again, I can connect with them right from here. Um, LinkedIn has made it very, very simple to, to navigate around. The other thing that LinkedIn introduced just a few months ago was the opportunity for you to let recruiters know that you are looking privately. And so this, I think, is a very, very interesting feature. You know, like I mentioned before, if you're in a job search and you're updating your LinkedIn profile, you know, you're worried that your current employer is going to find out that you're looking. Well, this is kind of a little bit of a behind the scenes way that you can let recruiters, you know, LinkedIn has products. They have sales navigator. They have um, LinkedIn recruiter. And so many recruiters purchase a LinkedIn recruiter license, which gives them some pretty robust tools. So for any recruiter who uses LinkedIn recruiter, um, recruiters can see people who have said, hey, I'm looking, 
right? But they're saying that privately only to people who use LinkedIn Recruiter. So the way that you can do that, you know, it's just opening up the door to recruiters to come find you. I think it's, it's a very interesting tool. You do not need to be a premium member to do this. So anyone can do this, but you can come back into your settings. So you click on your head at the top of the search bar, click on settings. Again, you can change settings in your account, privacy communications. You select privacy, job seeking, let recruiters know you're open to opportunities. And then you just turn that on. And again, it could open the door for recruiters to find you and to reach out to you without anybody else knowing that you're in your search. So these are some, some different ways that you can find those job opportunities. You can do research on target companies. You can do research on companies that you are scheduled to interview with and get that intelligence. And again, a lot of jobs that are on LinkedIn are not on CareerBuilder or Indeed or what have you. You know, recruiters, for, for recruiters, LinkedIn is a very, very targeted way to find candidates. You know, so if I'm a recruiter, I can post a job on CareerBuilder or Indeed, and we do this very often at Advanced Resources, and then I can hope that the right person is going to apply. But if I'm a recruiter and I'm using LinkedIn to find candidates, as you can see, there are many features and many tools I can use to find the right person. So as a job seeker, you have the ability to connect with that recruiter in such a more effective way than if you're just applying to a job that was on a job board. And so hopefully, you know, you've gotten a sense between getting noticed, getting connected, and then getting opportunities, just how powerful LinkedIn can be. And hopefully you've gotten a sense of the updates that they've made recently to just make it so much easier for a job seeker to have that success. So just a few things in closing then. You've got to be savvy when you're on LinkedIn. You know, proofread everything. There's nothing worse than just blatant typos in your LinkedIn profile. Really, no matter what field you are in, when there are typos, grammatical mistakes, it just shows a lack of attention to detail. So really make sure that you proofread it. Have other people look at your profile. Be that second pair of eyes for you because they might catch something. You know, make sure that your that your resume matches up with LinkedIn, right? Not word for word, but like the dates for each job that you've had, you wanna make sure that everything is consistent because again, it's just that I, um, I or attention to detail. Use LinkedIn to research jobs you found elsewhere. So maybe you have heard about a job for a friend or maybe you've heard, of, you know, heard about a job from a company's own website. Um, come to LinkedIn and look that company up. You know, companies might represent themselves with a little more personality on, on LinkedIn than they might do on their own corporate website. So use LinkedIn for research. Be professional always. So, you know, you're representing your personal brand on LinkedIn. Be professional in how you reach out to others, how you ask for connections or introductions. Always be professional in any articles that you might write or definitely be professional in any status updates that you might share with your network. You always want your best foot forward at all times. That just, I think, goes without saying as a job seeker. Always consider your personal brand. You know, everything that you put online gives people an impression of who you are and what you're about. So you want to keep that in mind. And then don't send mass emails. You know, maybe you, maybe you, you find a job, you've got 15 emails left in your account and you want to just blast people who work in that company you know don't do that it's everything in in terms of being an effective personal brand in terms of communication effectiveness it's all about being personalized and just really you know sending something that is authentic and something that is really one-on-one -on -one to a person will get you so much farther than just a blast cover email that you're sending out to a bunch of people so keep that in mind as well so the three fundamentals, get noticed, make sure that your online profile is compelling and complete and strong, um, get connected, so build your network, ask for connections, ask for introductions, join groups and build relationships with other people in groups and really build your network. And then third, get opportunities. Make sure that you're searching for the jobs and taking advantage of all the features that LinkedIn gives you to find those jobs. And so that is it for our content today. I wanted to just share before I look at the questions that we have three more sessions coming up this year, one in June, one in September, and one in November. 
And we're taking a different approach this year. When we send you the slides and the recording for this session today, we're also going to send you a link to a quick survey um, that just asks you what topics you are interested in as a job seeker that you would like to see us present on. And so, you know, whether it might be preparing yourself for an interview, whether it might be how to research a company or research the interviewer, or maybe you, how to do a phone screen or how to write your resume or how to negotiate your salary, you tell us what you're most interested in. And based upon the majority responses, that's how we're gonna pick our topics for the rest of the year. Like I said, you can see all the webinars that we have conducted on our website, and we give you the, the URL right here. Be sure, if you're not already following Advanced Resources on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram, YouTube, make sure that you go and, um, and follow us and like our pages because we just publish a continuous stream of job seeker advice and, um, and what have you. So stay, connect, stay connected with us online. And then finally, we do publish a blog every week and you can go to our blog on our website and subscribe. And whenever we publish a new blog, you'll receive it right in your inbox. And so now I'm just going to go to the questions and let me go through some of these. Okay, there's some jobs of, a di of different sensitive nature, mostly government projects. Due to restrictions, one cannot go as public as a corporate job, but that's certainly, um, that's certainly a unique circumstance, how you can promote yourself on social media. You know, I think that, I think that people, understand that if you've worked in a government job, let's say in a sensitive field where you know information is very secure, what have you, maybe you can't share everything that you've done. I think that if that is the case, and if um, information in, that you would normally put in your profile if you worked for a corporation, if you can't be that open about what you've done, I think the best thing to do is just to indicate that, you know, just say, just say duties and I'm limited in my ability to share what my duties and responsibilities or what my accomplishments were just due to the sensitive nature of, um, of the work that I did. You know, and I, I think that that's okay. I mean, I think, you know, in all cases where you're kind of in a situation where you're not sure what to do, the best thing to do is just to be honest and be diplomatic about how you word it. And I think that people will understand. What if you have a side business unrelated to your current job? Should I have two LinkedIn profiles? I don't want to alert my current employer to that side business, but I want to attract clients there. Um, then I would say yes. You know, I would say um, I would say you should have two separate profiles. And you know, I think that um, you're running a risk, of course, by being on LinkedIn that your employer might find it anyway, just because, of course, you don't have two different names. But if you if they are two truly separate businesses, if there is no benefit to be gained from any kind of you know. Um, any kind of integration or any synergy between the two. And if you really do hope to keep it private, then I would definitely, if they're two truly separate brands, if you will, um, then I would keep them separate. Okay, let me keep going through. Does LinkedIn stack up, stack up applicants to the recruiters on a similar page? I would have to check into that. I do not believe that I have seen a feature that would allow you to see all the recruiters who are who are searching for a particular job. As in the older version, it used to tell you the recruiter that had posted the job, um, but I don't I don't believe it is still doing that, and I can understand why because some recruiters would probably want to re remain anonymous. This is a recording, so someone asked if we're recording the session, and it is being recorded, and it will be shared out. Someone asked, LinkedIn is my only social network. Is that detrimental to landing a job? And the answer, as it is to so many questions in life, is it depends. <laughs> and so I think it depends upon the field that you're in. So for instance, for me, I'm in marketing. Social media is part of my job. Like I, it would be detrimental for me to not be anywhere other than LinkedIn. So, you know, obviously I want to show that I'm active on Twitter because I, you know, Twitter's part of my job and I want to show that I have skills about Twitter. So if I'm not, if I'm only active one place as a marketer, social media marketer, that would be detrimental. But if I'm a, you know, I don't know, maybe if I'm an accountant, you know, a CPA, is it detrimental to you to only be on LinkedIn? Probably not. You know, I think it really just depends. Um, I think that whatever you do and where, wherever you are active, whichever social media places you're active on, just do a good job at it. And so, 
you know, if you only have time to really cultivate one profile on one social media channel, then you want that to be LinkedIn if you're a job seeker. So hopefully that answers that question. Would you follow up with a recruiter that looks at your LinkedIn but does not contact you? Um, again, it depends. I think that you have to read the situation. Um, so yes, you have the ability as a premium member to see who's looking at your LinkedIn profile. And I think that that's very beneficial. I think, first of all, again, just from a confidence and self-esteem perspective, if you're a job seeker and you see that a lot of people are checking you out, I think that that can make you feel good. If, you're, if you see the recruiter from a, one of your target companies had checked you out, you know, I think that you just have to read the situation. If you feel um, that you really want to work there, it might be worth the, the risk to go ahead and reach out to that person. Um, I just think that you have to read the situation. You know, it could turn some recruiters off, right? I mean, you have to keep in mind that a recruiter, I think the statistic is, for every job that's posted online, a recruiter receives 250 resumes, 250. So that's a lot. That's a lot for a recruiter to sift through. And so, you know, sometimes people don't hear back from recruiters or sometimes, you know, if you reach out and it turns a recruiter off, you just have to realize that there could be a lot of people reaching out to that recruiter. So I just think you have to read your own situation and, you know, and make the determination on if that's something that you want to do or not. Okay. Let me go. Okay. That one, that question we already answered. Okay, and we are coming up, actually it's a little bit after one o'clock. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to end the session now, just because I wanna be respectful of everyone's time. But if you ask a question and I did not get, get back to you, I will one-on-one -on -one offline answer your question and get back to you um, through email. So I can see the people who asked the question, I have your email addresses, so I promise you that I'll circle back with you. So that is it for today. I wanna to thank everyone for their time and attention. This was one of our highest attended webinars, and so I'm very, very excited. I hope that everyone is walking away with at least one thing that they can apply to make their LinkedIn um, activity even more successful and to really help you land that dream job. So thank you so much, and I hope that you all have a great day.